And, and you were willing to go to Washington under the circumstances I alluded to, kind of, you know, right. wildly unpopular, very difficult to get anything done. You know, if you thought being one of 150 was powerless, try being one of 435. Yeah. Um, with the travel back and forth, as somebody pointed out, well, his brother's married and has a kid. He's single. He has no, <laughs> there's right. no impediment to traveling back and forth. He can <laughs> devote himself completely to this. But beyond that, you were willing, you wanted so badly to do this, that you were willing to challenge Roy Doggett. Sure. And you understand that the reaction from some people in this community was, well, cuss words, yeah. frankly. Uh, you know, uh, I, I call it in a very nice way the impertinence of youth. But the reality <laughs> is there were a lot of people who thought, how dare you take on Lloyd Doggett? Don't you look to Lloyd Doggett as the kind of person, the rare kind of person, doing the very things that you talked about wanting to do? Why knock yeah. him off? Why not just wait to have an opening? You, you were willing to take them on. Yeah, and you know, and I said all along that the reason that I got into the race was not because I don't like Lloyd. Uh, I think that if you look at his voting record, I think he has a very strong Democratic voting record, and I don't think anybody would disagree with that. Yeah. Uh, at the same time, it, wasn't, it was an open seat. It was anchored mostly in San Antonio. You viewed uh, it as an open seat because it was not the district as configured right. that he represents currently. Right. Do you think he would take issue with that, with that characterization? I'm sure he would. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think he considered it an open seat. I think he considered it the Doggett seat. <laughs> right. I'm sure he would. Yeah. You know, but uh, it was interesting. I mean, you know, I, I, I half jokingly on the campaign trail, I was coming up here for five months all the time. Uh, I, I joke that I like being in Austin, but first of all, because nobody called me the mayor when I'm up here. Right, nobody <laughs> confused you. That's yeah, right. That's true. <laughs> I go back home, even yesterday, you know, on Sunday there was you know, a big on the front page of the metro section, we had the press conference and, you know, my picture and my name, and then I go to the cleaners to drop off my clothes yesterday, and the woman, when I walk in, says, Mr. Mayor, you know, so it happens every day that people still think I'm my Look, look he's popular. It could, be, it could be a lot worse, that's actually, right? True. The reality yeah. is it got unstuck. That's right. But it didn't get unstuck until you had, frankly, gotten a lot of Austin Democrats to choose you over him. Sure. Those people are going to have to get back into Lloyd's good graces now. <laughs> you understand what you've done. I mean, you... Well, in, there's in a few of them here. I so. know. <laughs> it, what, what, what you've done indirectly is, is caused a bunch of Austin Democrats to put themselves at a distance from Lloyd, and they're going to have to now grovel and get back on the late train, although as my friend Mr. Fainter tells me, early train, late train, it's still the train. Uh, no, matter, no matter what you do, you're on the train. I mean, do, do you have any remorse about making people choose? Oh, I mean, I think that, you know, if, if I'd have been able to see back then that I wasn't even gonna run in the district, then sure, then, you know, then. if I had a crystal ball. Obviously. But I think that, that Lloyd said something that I thought was very thoughtful. Uh, he said that he thought that the experience, although I'm sure he wouldn't want to have gone through it, yeah. uh, made him a stronger person. And I would say the same thing about me. Right. There were folks in San Antonio uh, that I was surprised were supporting him, yeah. uh, you know, that I thought would support me. So I think it, it is a kind of reckoning now mm -hmm. to go back for each of us into our towns and figure out, okay, you know, what bridges do I need to repair yeah. or what explanations or, you know, what, what is it, what was the reason for that? So sure, I think, I think it will be helpful. I think, I know it'll be helpful for me, and I would suspect it'll be helpful for him. There's too. a fight at the family dinner table. Yeah, right, on, sure. on some levels, sure. those fights come to an end. So um, have you and Lloyd spoken? You know, I, I uh, talk, called Andy, I don't know if Andy Brown's here yesterday, I asked him to put us in touch, so I'm, I'm sure we'll talk very soon. Do you think yeah. it's gonna all be okay? I think so, I will, think. Will you offer to come up and do a fundraiser for Lloyd? <laughs> if he asked me to, I absolutely will. Well, why don't will. you offer? <laughs> I, okay, I'll talk to him about it. Okay, good. <laughs> Look at me playing marriage counselor. Isn't that great? Actually playing, playing peacemaker.